Hello there, this is Leo Waldock for Kit Guru, and this is the NZXT Doco. NZXT we're used to seeing our cooling and case products, uh, peripherals is a slightly different territory for us. And it's not, as you might think at first sight, something like a USB fan controller or some such. This is, well, it's, it's kind of a PC range extender. Um, what we have is essentially a smart TV type control unit. We've got four USB 2 uh, ports on the front. We've got a power button and then on the rear we have an Ethernet port, HDMI and a jack for the power brick. Uh, like yay. Um, which supplies out 30 watts. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, not that it draws anything like 30 watts. Um, it so happens I sent a European job which I had to use an adapter with as this is a relatively early model. Um, and you also get in the package an Ethernet cable and pretty much the world's shortest quick start guide, which consists of plug in your device, uh, run the software, enjoy it. Here's the idea. Your gaming PC is over there near your router. Your TV's in the sitting room living room, lounge, call it what you will. You're sitting on your sofa thinking, wouldn't it be terrific if I could sit here playing all my PC games, but your PC's in a different room. Your TV's in this room, your PC's in that room. What to do? So NZXT and a few other companies have got a similar idea. NZXT's idea is this. You put this uh, doco under your television, uh, along with all the other gizmos, your games, consoles, your uh, various media streaming devices and such like your TiVo box and goodness knows what else. You connect your USB peripherals, mouse, keyboard, games controller uh, to those ports there. At present, it doesn't support um, USB headset or USB camera. However, those uh, devices are expected to come in a firmware update uh, in the near future. So for the time being, not a headset and not a camera. So you plug in your mouse, your keyboard, your games controllers, that's fine. You plug an ethernet cable in the back and you output it to your TV. And provided you're running the Doco software called Sender, Sender yes, on your PC, when you turn your Doco on, it will find any PC or laptop or computer on your network that is running the Sender software and you basically select that computer and this then acts as a remote control, essentially a remote interface for that computer. So, you're running Sender on your gaming PC in that room over there. You're connected to Steam or whichever service you're using. And then you're sat at your doco and you select that computer and then you use your controller in the usual way and you start playing your game on your TV. And that's all fine. There is, however, a bit of a snag. And the snag is that, of course, you're connected to your PC and you have to be connected over Ethernet. There's no Wi-Fi built into this and NZXT makes the point they don't want you to connect over home plug or any of those sorts of convenience systems. You have to run an Ethernet cable from the doco to the router. Now, in most circumstances, uh, your router is going to be located near your PC. That's probably the reason why you either chose the location for your internet connection to come into your house or flat or whatever in the first place. And it's also going to be the reason why your PC is where it is, because you can connect it to your router. Uh, you'd be fairly round the twist if you were to do it any other which way. So you've got to string an ethernet cable from this to your router, which in any circumstance I can think of is a bit inconvenient. It's either inconvenient or it makes the whole thing a bit irrelevant because if your ethernet connection is just going a short distance across the room, you could just as easily frankly run your peripherals from your PC. You could even run a long HDMI cable from your PC to your TV if you're talking about a sort of bed sit flat bedroom kind of setup. Anyway, the hardware inside this doco is a system on chip from a company I've not heard of before called Wonder Media. The precise uh, uh, system on chip or processor, as I understand it, is a Prism 8750, which is an 800 megahertz single core ARM chip, uh, which is the sort of thing you find as a, a relatively basic smart TV. 
Uh, I note that Samsung in their smart TVs now are distinguishing and differentiating one model to the other by whether it's a single, dual or quad-core processor. It's, it's reached the stage now where televisions include in the specification what kind of processor. This is a single core processor. Um, US pricing for this is $99. At the moment it appears UK pricing is uh, £99. So it's not cheap. Um, were it to be American pricing and translated to the UK, if we're talking 60, 65 pounds, that'd be a relatively cheap device. 99 pounds ain't cheap. Now, the thing is, the nature of the hardware uh, uh, gives you a particular limitation, which is you're limited to 1080 uh, HD gaming. Now, obviously, that's not a problem for most TVs because the next step up is 4K and most of us don't have a 4K TV. So 1080 as a TV limitation isn't a problem. However, it's 30 frames per second at 1080. Uh, and that's not good. After all, games generally want to head towards 60 frames per second. 30 you'd regard as not great. Um, and the reason for that is that the sender software has to take the output from your graphics card on your PC or laptop, compress the signal, send it across your uh, network connection to the doco, which then receives it, and outputs it to the TV. And there's obviously um, work involved in that. There's, and it's a continuous workload, continuous or continual, I'm not sure of the word. Uh, because obviously this is gaming, so it's bib 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 bib. Um, and the hardware limitation is why you have a 30 frames per second cap on the gameplay. Now, we have seen news that uh, the Forge TV unit, which is basically the same sort of uh, idea, except it has a Qualcomm quad-core processor in it, uh, that is apparently going to be, uh, it's not happened yet, so you know we're working on paper uh, specs, that will apparently have a 60 frames per second cap. Now, 60 frames per second is a completely different ballgame. 30, not good. 60, fine. The other problem is that uh, because you're streaming data across the network, if your network is working absolutely properly and you haven't got bottlenecks and um, hassle, you're looking at an 80 millisecond latency. Now, if you're sat there playing one of these casual games, that isn't an issue. If you're trying to play a competitive online game, 30 frames per second, 80, uh, 80 milliseconds, uh, it's pointless. Now, it so happens um, that I did. Uh, I played Thief over Doku. I played it natively on the PC, uh, my gaming PC, and then I played it uh, connected through the Doku to um, uh, another screen. And as it happens, I didn't see the 30 frames cap. What I actually saw was 38.6 frames per second. Uh, so perhaps the 30 frames per second is a don't expect better than 30 frames per second. If you get more, that's terrific. Um, the same game of Thief was playing on my gaming PC, and uh, this is at 1080, uh, at 45.6 frames per second. So actually the doco had an effect, but it wasn't catastrophic. The latency, however, it was noticeable, but that's not an issue if you're playing a single player game or may not be an issue if you're playing a single player game. Uh, so the two most obvious problems with it would appear to be the latency and the frame rate cap, and they may or may not be an issue to you. However, and I'm sure at this point you've thought to yourself, why on earth is he talking about playing games and not showing us how it works? Okay, so you want to see Doco in action, and this is what I've cooked up. Uh, over here, I've got the Bitfenix Pandora system that I reviewed recently for Kit Guru. It's running a Core i7 processor with a GTX 980 graphics card and SSD, so it's a proper gaming PC. Um, this monitor here is connected to that case. Uh, here I've got the doco and I've got uh, this monitor connected to that. Um, this is a network switch, uh, so Ethernet cable to PC, Ethernet cable to doco. And the tripod that you can see over my shoulder, I've got a camera up above looking down at these screens so you better see what's going on. Uh, now then, what you have to imagine is not that you've got these two things sat on your table together because that obviously would be pointless. So actually this computer, gaming PC, and this monitor are in that room over there where the router is. And this is not actually um, a monitor connected to the doco. This is the TV and therefore I am sat on a sofa. Right, now once we've established that and therefore you still have to get around the business of your ethernet cable uh, going from the one thing to the other, uh, specifically from the router, to the doco, that's the thing. And actually for me, that's the biggest issue is wherever your router is and wherever your TV is, you've got to connect the two things with an ethernet cable. 
which I consider to be a pain in the neck. Um, so that's that. Now, what we have on the screen at the moment are the uh, quality settings and um, for Far Cry 3, which is running on the gaming PC. So we, uh, as you can see, it's set to Ultra. Well, you can with this camera anyway. Right, so we go back to the game. And one other thing I'm just going to say is I'm running this with mouse and keyboard. Now, the thing is that one of the devices that is specifically listed as compatible with Doco is the USB Xbox 360 game controller. I use one of those all the time for PC gaming and it's terrific. Um, never gives me a problem. It doesn't work with my Doco. I've read uh, other people's comments about this controller where it works absolutely perfectly, so I don't understand that. Um, I've used Microsoft and Logitech hardware with the Doco without any problem. That Xbox controller should work either wired or the wireless version. My wired version was having none of it, and I don't get it. Um, so I'm just going to say that. That's why I'm using mouse and keyboard. Now, the way that the USB over IP works is that the sender software basically loads a bunch of drivers depending on which devices you have connected. And it should have no problem with that particular controller. Clearly, if um, there will undeniably be or undoubtedly be updates to the sender software and also firmware updates to Doco. Um, I, when I installed this, I had a quick update to the firmware and I obviously used the latest sender software. Uh, so it's not actually a major deal for NZXT to update drivers. However, in this instance, clearly they think that this Doco should work with my device, and it didn't. Um, compatibility with devices is often a pain in the neck, but in this case, it would appear to be a problem um, that I have, whether it actually means my controller has some slight snag arm I'm completely unaware of, who knows. But there we go. Anyway, um, so we've got two screens. So with the camera behind, just to reiterate, the left screen is connected to the gaming PC, the right screen is connected to uh, the Pandora. Uh, sorry, it's connected to the Doka. Left screen to the Pandora, right screen to Doka. Um, they're both running at 1080, and there is a difference in brightness because they're not the same monitor. That's a ViewSonic, and that's a brand new Yama. Um, however, so the resolution is the same. They do look slightly different for that reason. And now, when I move around a little bit and we look up at the sky, and we go down and we go up, you can see that the left screen moves and the right screen lags slightly. Um, it is not a huge difference. This 80 millisecond or such, such, some such latency, uh, obviously I can't gauge precisely what the difference is in it, but it is a tiny fraction of a second. Um, the other thing is, and this might not be so apparent on the screen, is that the main left screen connected to the PC directly over HDMI, the sky is uniform and uh, as you'd expect it to be. Uh, the blues just kind of, you know, uh, change uh, shade. The right screen, it's got that sort of banding thing that you sometimes see when, um, like, the ceiling of a room in a game is actually basically a great big bitmap that's then been just expanded to cover a large area with as little code as possible. Uh, in this instance, I can distinctly see some bands. Uh, however, in terms of uh, video compression and decompression, if that is evidence of that, and clearly they use video compression and decompression when they're streaming data, if that's as bad as it gets, that's actually pretty good. Anyway, so there we go. So there's a bit of a delay. And if I just run over here and aim my gun and go fire. And you can see quite clearly it's bang, 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 bang. However, in terms of image quality and such like, uh, it is surprisingly good, and it is worth reiterating, this is not a tiny, tiny gaming PC, it is a range extender. The gaming PC is this box here, it's a GTX 980 that's sending the signal to this, except it's going through Ethernet. Uh, it is not this tiddly little box that is making the, the picture do what it does, that's simply transmitting a signal. Um, so apart from the compatibility of my USB games controller, for me, the biggest problem is the Ethernet cable because you've got to connect your PC wherever it is in your house, flat, office, whatever it might be, wherever the router is and your PC are, it has to connect from there to wherever your TV is because that's where the doco will be. So you need to visualize where the one place is and where the other place is and how you'll connect the two. 
Now, it is not beyond the wit of man to connect the devices other than via Ethernet, except NZXT is warning against it. You can use home plug, despite what they say. However, it has to be the correct home plug, because basically this uh, setup, when you're streaming, say, video, you're at least 100 megabytes per second. Um, and when you're doing hardcore uh, video flow and games, you could be looking at 250 megabytes per second. Now, the thing is that home plug doesn't really do that particularly well. Home plug AV can do that. Proper home plug AV should do that. And my guess, although NZXT says do not use home plug, use Ethernet cable, use no other technology, we know perfectly well there are wireless technologies that do more than 250 megabytes per second. Um, uh, 8211AC, obviously. Um, but even high end 8211N is in that territory. Uh, but it has to be decent quality. And uh, home plug, proper home plug, would actually, I think, do the trick. Um, however, in this instance, I've played by the rules, I've used Ethernet, and that throws up the biggest issue for me, which is the connection. But as you can see, without a shadow of a doubt, it does work. You can run around, you can sit at your TV, and provide that little lag isn't an issue to you, this system works perfectly well. So there we are, that's Doco in action. The problem is how am I going to use it? Now, it's the Ethernet connection that gives me a problem because my gaming PC is connected to the internet so I can play Steam games. If I bring the gaming PC in here and then uh, bring a router in here and connect a doco in here so you can see all the hardware all together and we pretend it's all spread out of it, then I have to connect my PC to the internet and then it means the PC is here and my router's over there, which puts us in exactly the same position as we're in with the doco here and the router over there, which is either I've got to string a long cable across the place, and that's just not going to happen, or I want Wi-Fi, but I want Wi-Fi that can do gameplay hammering away. Now, we know there are routers that can do um, uh, prioritising traffic, you know, prioritising my gameplay, prioritise Netflix, whatever. This is not new technology. It's been around for years now. Quality of service, it's called. But Doco doesn't have Wi-Fi and it doesn't have home plug. You may not be familiar with home plug. Um, it's a terrific idea. If you're not familiar, you should really read up on it. Um, it's, it feeds your network signal over your mains electricity uh, uh, wiring. So you basically plug it into a plug socket. Uh, one at either end, it's like a wall freshener kind of unit, like one of those layer fresheners, and you have an Ethernet cable, goes into it, goes to your router, feeds through the main voltage, out comes the other end, uh, Ethernet cable goes into your uh, games consoles. I use it here myself, my games consoles um, and other devices. It works absolutely flawlessly. It's like magic. Um, Ethernet over electricity. Uh, sounds ridiculous, works terrifically. Big in Germany, not so big in the UK. You should use it. Doco, they say, don't use a uh, home plug. It's a terrible shame. So I didn't because I was told not to. So here's the thing. I don't know when I would use either this unit or a unit like it. Um, because if I'm playing a game on my gaming PC, I don't want to play a game at 1080 at 30 frames per second, thank you very much. I want to play higher resolution and faster with all the quality settings. Leave aside for the moment the latency. Um, if you're playing a single player game, that's not such an issue. It's that you have a gaming PC so you can kick the backside out of a console. You want very fast frame settings, you want very high quality settings, you want big resolution. 1080 is the starting point, not the limit. Um, there are a couple of little quibbles about the software, which works perfectly well, which is um, because it is essentially a PC extender, you are mirroring, you're reflecting what's on the screen of your chosen PC. It does look a bit peculiar if you don't run 1080 on the sending computer and then 1080 on the doco. So if you're outputting to a 720 TV, that would look a bit weird. Um, if your PC is running a higher resolution than 1080 and then you're outputting to a 1080, that also looks a bit peculiar. You also, um, I, I ran into a scaling problem, which is that the sending PC the signal was scaled absolutely fine. Um, I'd adjusted it. It's um, an, an AMD uh, set of hardware. Uh, however, the doco output to a screen wasn't scaled fine. I was outputting to a PC monitor, not a TV. TV is no problem at all. TV basically just ignores the fact scaling is wrong. Uh, but the doco, it was doing that classic overscanning thing. Um, so that's 
more quibble. The software itself, I have to say, worked very well indeed. It really was dead straightforward. Once you run it on your sending PC and the PC is there, Doco just picked it up like that. Absolutely straightforward. It's a very small utility, about a megabyte in size. Um, so that's no problem. It also did that classic sort of device thing, which was it had a sniff around, found the internet connection, decided there's a firmware update, downloaded it, installed it. Um, and restarted. Uh, it was noticeable the download and installation took quite some minutes, very similar to Western Digital TV, which again uh, runs a slow processor because it doesn't need to run a fast processor, uh, hence it's silent, passively cooled, and all the rest of it. Uh, and that also speaks to the slowness of the hardware inside. I think we're all used these days to consoles and PCs and laptops downloading and installing updates blisteringly fast. This really crawled along, quite noticeable. So, here's the takeaway. NZXT Doco, it works. It works as described. It actually works very well. Provided it's what you want, then it works uh, well enough to be recommended, except at £99, that's just too expensive. Uh, Razer Forge TV, not sure how much that's going to cost. Uh, the US price at the minute, $140. That could potentially be about the same £99, in which case it's a direct competitor, and provided it does what it promises, it's going to beat this hollow. Uh, on the other hand, if it's £140, that's youch. That's a lot of money. Uh, the thing is, an Xbox 360S or PS3 second hand, you can get them for under in the, in the UK, used for under £100. Obviously, if you want the next gen consoles with um, AMD hardware, that's a different story. You know, you're shooting up to three to four hundred pounds. Um, the thing is, at the extreme end of the scale, if you want to play PC games on your TV, there is a solution, and we reviewed it. It's the Asus Republic of Gamers GR8, uh, which essentially is a laptop that you plug into your TV. The thing is, it's eight hundred pounds, and as various reader comments on my review said about that, you know, what? How much? Forget it. Um, so that's the other end of the scale. That, of course, does exactly what you expect because that is a computer. That doesn't have any latency or any uh, issues to do with the frame rates. It does 1080 properly. Um, on the other hand, £800. But in a sense, that does illustrate the problems that NZXT and other companies are facing, which is to do it right, 800 quid. Well, that's a load of money. If you want to do it cheap, you're into this sort of territory. You're into taking the hardware, using that, sending the signal across a network. And whilst this is not cheap enough, in my opinion, it, neither does it do a good enough job. So there we have it. Uh, I have a fundamental problem with the concept of these uh, game range extender type devices. Uh, this to me is not the way to go forward. Uh, whether a faster processor, higher frame rate makes um, enough of a difference to suck me in, I'm not entirely certain, because I think I have more of an issue with the fundamental concept rather than what they've done. However, for the time being, NZXT and the Doco, if they drop the price, I think it's going to get some traction in the market. I'm not certain that this one's a game changer. So there we go. This is Leo Waldock for Kit Guru TV with the NZXT Doco.